Y'all might want to make some cauliflower popcorn bites because this is going to take a while. Hey everybody, welcome to the response video to Nicholas's video titled Drama at Woodstock Fruit Festival, Why We Are Leaving the Raw Community, Part 3. This video will be addressing some of his other claims and his other videos and uh, mainly the most serious thing is he has tried to defame the Woodstock Fruit Festival, defame raw veganism in general and defame my character and other people's character using really deceitful, malicious tactics um, like omission and exaggeration and just blatant lies. And it's, it's, quite, it's quite amazing what he's gotten away with. He, I think he really has thousands of people that actually believe this kind of stuff. And that is not okay. This is not so much about saving my reputation as it is about bringing justice to the Woodstock Fruit Festival, to Lisa, to my wife, to me, and to anybody else that they, they have lied about. Um, because I, I really don't think this is a new thing. Um, it goes back at least a year. There's a pattern here that you will recognize if you watch this whole video, um, if you pay attention. And there's a, this, there's a pattern going on here that really needs to be addressed by Nicholas and Orlin. Um, I will do it for them just so they understand the severity of the issue and see that other people are noticing this issue as well. I referred to their video in the past as a sort of evil genius, but honestly, I don't believe in evil. And second of all, all they have done here is dug themselves an extremely deep hole that they now have to find a way to climb out of. Um, I'm happy with sending a rope or a, a ladder down to show them a way to climb out of this. Um, I have no intention of creating drama, um, but I do have an intention of telling the whole truth because this their half-truths and lies and exaggerations have done a, quite a number on Woodstock's reputation and mine and others, so um, that is not okay, and that's why this video is being made. So without further ado, enjoy. So this is how all of our conversations started. This is the first thing he's ever said to me in my life. Your Utopia or Oblivion video makes me cry every time. I'm not exaggerating. Um, I really liked hearing that. That was very nice. I said thank you. So Utopia or Oblivion is the video that Nick plagiarizes later. Um, you'll see. And I never cared. I never said anything until he started accusing me of stealing his work. And when I did mention that, he lied and said, no, I didn't plagiarize it. Um, he eventually said, yeah, okay, I did plagiarize it. Um, I think it's important to point out that. So this is just the first boxcar in a long train of hypocrisy. Here between these two messages is Woodstock. So here's August 3rd and here is September 12th. Woodstock happened here. This just goes to show that he was not very upset at me. He was happy enough to say he loves my pictures and asking me about my camera. So, I mean, he might have been upset with me, honestly, but he wasn't showing it because he wanted to learn more about my camera equipment, um, which I think is very important to point out because when he does end up apologizing for the copyright strike he puts on my account the year later, he tells me that part of the reason why he did it was because he was jealous of my camera equipment and video skills. Yeah. So here's an interesting thing. In Nicholas's video, he claims that I call James Claus retarded. Uh, trust me, if he had proof of me saying anything like that, which I never have, he would put a screenshot of it. But here is him saying, and honestly, I think James Claus and Jonas Sunshine have a mental disorder. And that just goes to show that Nick got way closer to saying that James is retarded than I ever did. I don't even use that word anymore, not since elementary school or something like that. Dustin and Mara, they don't eat greens and they've talked about fat. They've never said fat is bad or greens are bad or anything like that. They've just stated facts and Nick has a history of taking somebody's facts if they aren't in line with what he does as somebody saying, you're wrong, you're bad, you're doing the wrong thing. So in Nick's video, there's a section where he's condemning me for telling this girl that she's bad and wrong and eating the wrong foods and doing the wrong thing. Um, when in reality, what actually happened was she posted something. I'm not going to mention her name because she didn't want me to drag her into this more than Nick already has. But she made a post that says, To all my friends enslaved by the 80-10-10 dogma, I ate low fat for a while and I promise you will crash and burn. And I was like, well, it's a little contradictory because you're saying don't fall enslaved to dogma, but you will 
will crash and burn if you eat low fat. So she's like, oh, I guess I didn't mean that everybody will crash and burn. So she changed her status, edited it to you may crash and burn. I deleted all my comments. We came to a civil agreement and Nicholas turned this into me telling her she was bad and she was wrong. It's, it's just fucking ridiculous. I can't even. So I do skip over quite a bit in this video. Um, I encourage people to watch the full video, but I skip over a bit where Nicholas is using his drama that he's creating on Facebook to just plug his YouTube channel in randomly in the conversation because it was getting a lot of like a lot of people were commenting. So he would just plug his, his YouTube channel in there. I thought in the first place, the drama he was creating was being a little ridiculous and people were definitely be, being absolutely ridiculous on the, the thread. When he started plugging in his YouTube channel, I was like, dude, this is too much. I'm gonna start talking to him. So I was like, dude, please inspect your integrity. Ask yourself, how the, how is this in affecting my integrity to start drama and then like bank off of it? And that didn't go over well. Uh, eventually, we, we sort of got over that. But soon after, I made a video about Doug Graham because I found out he was lying in my video. Um, and, or he was lying in another video. The fact of the matter is his stories didn't match up. So I got a little upset and I put to together a video that was talking about him and Leah um, and his lies and, dis and dishonesty and stuff. I quickly took that down after a few days because... I realized that it was a bad idea to put that video up, even though it did take a lot of work. I took the video down, and I think that's a little lesson that I think Nick needs to learn, that no matter how long something takes you, no matter how many pennies it's getting you on YouTube, it's worth it to take it down if it shows that you have some integrity, if you're learning lessons. Life isn't all about YouTube money, you know? so. I do skip over this. I encourage people to watch the full length of our conversation where I address everything. Watch that. Make sure and watch that if you don't believe me or think I'm leaving things out. I also wrote a document that can be read alongside with Nick's video because that was a way of me being able to address everything Nick says. So basically it just has a timestamp that you press pause at and then read what I say. So it just sort of gives the whole truth, the whole side of the story to everything. There's a lot on that that is not in this video or even on the video I made. Um, <laughs> that's why I was thinking this is some bit of evil genius because it's just the amount of time it takes to debunk this and the videos are so long that nobody's gonna even watch this. So I just eventually found peace in the fact that I'm, I know <laughs> that I'm being truthful and I'm not the one that has to go to sleep in, at night or look in the mirror, you know, knowing what I've done, so. Anyways, on to more fun. So here, um, this is where Nicholas takes a screenshot of this particular part right here. And then he leaves out all of this and 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 all of this. And then boom, he puts this as if that was my response to what he said. So I'm going to show you what he left out and what that made me look like and how it made him look like as well. So you can rewind it and read everything where I'm saying and all of this and all of this and all of this because I'm not gonna show you everything in this video. Everything is on another video, all of our conversations, just so you can prove that I'm not cherry picking little bits and pieces to make him look bad and me look great like he did. Um, it's all here, click here if you wanna watch that. It's an hour long video, but um, it's there. So here he says that he didn't take clips from my video. He found them on Google which I can prove right now that that's a lie. In the forests of Africa, where we lived in peace on a diet of mostly fruits and vegetables. Once upon a time, we lived in an ecosystem in East Africa. Evolutionary growth of our brains. At some point, either our curiosity or environmental disaster drove us to explore the outside world. With tropical animals. It wasn't until we migrated away from the Eating animals has served us well to allow us to migrate and inhabit the world. Like the agricultural revolution has allowed us to settle away from our natural environments and away from our natural the extinction of all wildlife. While animal husbandry and fishing are the natural actions became necessary. The idea that we are superior to other life forms. Well, it's a very difficult process for some and sexism. People indoctrinated by religious bigotry will be the last to abolish speciesism. Food choices. It's not just about eating. To those who came before us and fought for social reformation. Therefore, we owe our lives 
to social reformation. And black people were viewed as inferior because of their differences. It's important that you remember that you're privileged, not because you have a home, a computer, the internet. You are privileged. You have the internet and you have a computer. He also, as you can see, he used my wording for he basically plagiarized changed around the wording and a lot of things i say in that video i don't care i never mentioned it up until now until he tried to accuse me of stealing his ideas this pattern of nick getting offended and trying to destroy something by garnering other people's support through deception and omission you will become um, quite obvious i think if you have not noticed it already he did it with me he did it with raw foodis when he got offended and now he's doing it with woodstock so this is something I want to highlight and say and take a moment. You can never grow if you're not willing to admit mistakes. If you're not willing to, to acknowledge what you've done to me now, Nicholas, absolutely defamed me. You've acknowledged that you put a flag on my account, but that's pretty obvious that you only did that because I made it very obvious that I was finally going to expose it after the lies you, you made about Woodstock. I think that's the only reason that you told the world that you made that mistake is because um, you wanted to look like the, the one with integrity. You wanted to look like the victim um, who made a little mistake and is now apologizing and feels bad for it. But in the meantime, you, may, you were making an even larger, more conscious, more drawn out attack on me Just with all these things you've done to me. The felony of trying to take my YouTube account, the slander and defamation through various, various lies that you've done to me in the past week it could put you away for quite a while or at least in a lot of trouble for a long time. The pennies you made off YouTube um, as a result. Believe me, you're not worth the mo money that you'd owe me if I did believe in punishment in that way. But I don't, so I would like for you to admit your mistakes. So I think one thing that's really important that people realize is that I could have basically ruined Nick's reputation a year ago when he tried to take down my YouTube account because of some silly arguments we were having. And I didn't because I learned from my creation of drama in the past. I learned that it doesn't serve anybody. It's not my worth my time. It's a waste of time. And you think I want to be doing this right now? You think I want to be making this video? In his video, he's like, just watch. Rainey's going to make a response video to this. And it's going to prove that he loves drama and he's a hypocrite. And it's like, dude, you think I want to be making this video? This is damage control. I never wanted any of this to happen. Um, I tried to solve this peacefully like... The men that we claim to be privately many times I've, I've even made public videos apologizing to you for the little things i've done and forgiving you for the huge things you've done to me um i've recently sent you an email saying hey dude let's squash this and you never wrote back i think it's pretty clear that this is getting you a lot of views and a lot of attention and it's this is what you want and it's not it's not going to help you in the end man you can't just keep you can't keep going on like this this is not a way to deal with your problems Yes, the status I made was about you. Sometimes it's helpful for me to express myself to feel better about the situation and getting the support when feeling backed into a corner. Um, I think this is what he did with his video. He fell backed into a corner because I was about to ex expose all of his lies and his patterns of attacking people when he gets offended. So he fell backed into a corner and he made a, a, a video on social media on YouTube. So if I'm guilty of anything other than not being appreciative or grateful enough for Nicholas's performance at our wedding, it's that I hold up mirrors in front of people who do not want to see themselves or what they're doing. And that's how I get blocked. It happens quite often. And sometimes people will even write statuses about me saying things that I didn't say. And since I'm blocked, I can't defend myself. And that's exactly what's happening here. He's blocked me. I can't see anything he posts. He deletes everything I post on YouTube and deletes anything anybody posts on YouTube that is against him. He asks people not to like statuses that make him look bad, you know, and he has a video called censorship is oppression. Yeah, it is. That's exactly what you're doing. You're being an oppressive force right now. And you just admitted why because you felt backed into a corner because I told you, yeah, I'm going to expose what you're doing. All these lies you're putting out against Woodstock. Yeah, I'm going to expose. I'm going to show people what you're doing. So people realize that no, Woodstock didn't do anything wrong, except maybe a few things that they already apologized for. You didn't get herpes from Woodstock. And I was going to show people that. So you put a personal attack on me. And you just admitted that that's what you do. I mean, 
it's all here, people. I would like to mention some stuff about um, Tasha Miley. He accused me of being anti-breastfeeding, and uh, that's not at all what was going on. This woman had a account on YouTube where it started out as a maternal education account, and um, she started catering to the men that were obviously the main viewers of her account, selling her used garments to these men for the prices of about $800 or something. I tried to contact her privately about the same thing, keeping your integrity. There's the feminist movement right now needs women to not be sexualizing the breast, especially in a breastfeeding context or environment. He, she also had offers of selling signed nudes to men on her YouTube channel, guised as a maternal education channel. And she even used the hashtag free the nipple to promote her selling nudes to men. I get that I might get a lot of flack from people who believe in sex work. Um, I do not. I do not believe um, sex work is a part of feminism. I think it is catering to the perversion, perpetuating the hypersexuality of the female body, the, the objectification of the female body, and the disrespect for females. So um, I would like to make it clear that I am not against breastfeeding. I am not against Tasha. I never called her a slut or anything like that. I simply asked her to acknowledge what she's doing as not being helpful to the movement that she claims to be about. And I did everything in private. She blocked me and wrote a public message about me claiming that I was against breastfeeding and that I was trying to take down her YouTube account. And I, uh, as, a, as I was blocked, I could not write or defend myself on this post. So I used Anna's account to defend myself saying that it was me and she immediately blocked that as well. So, and I think I've learned my lesson just to stay out of people's business. Even though I, I don't think anything I was doing was wrong, I was trying to do it with the most utmost integrity that I could. I tried to talk to Tasha at Woodstock Fruit Festival. She said we would talk later, and, and she never got back to me. So, yeah, this is the kind of thing I'm looking for again. Um, but not just to me, but to the whole community. Woodstock, in particular, Lisa, you know who you need to apologize to. He equates me to a child molester, compares me to a child molester in his new videos. He says that, oh, because a child molester molested me, I now molest kids and that makes it okay. Um, equating that to my mushroom trip and me being emotionless. Not a very apt comparison if you ask me. All right, so when I was 14, I ate some mushrooms at a crazy trip. I wouldn't call it a bad trip because I wouldn't be the person I am today if I had not have had that trip. It had a detrimental effect on my communication skills because I let it. I don't want to blame the mushrooms. I think they're a interesting tool that people can use. Anyways, that's a different story. But yeah, I developed social anxieties when Nick says that I came up to him and I was extremely awkward um, and monotone. That's what happens. I was fearful. I, I made a mistake. I, f I forgot to mention him in my status and I came up to him and apologized and I was socially awkward. But is that a reason to equate somebody to a child molester or to make fun of the way they looked or acted? You know, I told him the truth of what happened. You'll see if you watch my full video that he understood and he appreciated me telling him that. But now later he's making fun of me you know, and equating me to a child molester. So here, this is good, all good stuff. So I'm understanding myself more and more every day. He seems to not want to talk about it anymore. Getting very close to the day that he puts the flag on my account. It's about four days away. So now we're sort of doing some awkward small talk. The, everything's very short, cool, thumbs up. <laughs> At the laundromat, I like the laundromat, vibe, good times, productive leisure. <laughs> very awkward and there's obviously problems. Okay, so the next time, 618, I get on June 18th and I find this email. You have a copyright takedown notice. Carlos Plaus has tried to take down your Woodstock Hawaii video. So what did I do? I Googled Carlos Plaus. I found that the only things he has ever commented on are um, Nicholas's videos about Columbia, Fruitarians. So I was like, hmm. So I looked at the comments. They're all extremely overly positive. Oh, you guys are so mature. You guys are the best. 
I'm watching so many of your videos and each one is something new and unexpected. And like anything I've ever seen before in raw food YouTubers. So he's already admitted on his video that this is him. So this is proof that he was using a fake account to garner support on his YouTube. I have proof that he was doing it again in his recent videos, but this time he wasn't just garnering support. He was using a fake account to defame the Woodstock Fruit Festival. Much more serious. So I, I had my my pretty strong suspicions that it was Nicholas. So I said, hey man, do you know Carlos Plows? He's the only comments he's ever made are on your videos. Have you ever had any trouble with him? Looks like he's a big fan of yours. Do you mind talking to him and asking him if he'll take off the charge? And yeah, I'll send him a message right now. I don't know who that is. Lies, lies, lies. Um, lies from Orland too. So here's him saying, how do you know he only comments on my videos? How did you catch me, Rainy? Um, maybe you should write him a letter. Um, I think that's his way of saying, uh, do you have his address? Do you have his information? Do you know it's me? I'll give your channel a shout out. So this is me saying, hey bro, just come on, let's work together. I'm really sorry about all this, lies, I'm sorry. Lies, 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 just lies, lies upon lies. Um, so here's him talking about not making enough money on YouTube, so that's why he stopped. 10.03 p.m. Remember that. So I go to Orlin. I want to point out that the first thing Orlin ever said to me was, Hey dude, will you look at this video where I ask people to promote my Instagram so I can win a contest to get a ticket to Woodstock? But he accuses me of being fake. I mean, he literally has a heart after every sentence asking me to promote his to get him free stuff. But, all right, so here's the same day that I'm talking to Nicholas and the other one, um, Carlos still has his strike on me. So Nick says, hey, Nick says you've been quite nice to him and you said you'll do a shout out video for us. I'm sorry you got a strike. I know, I hope it doesn't happen to you again. All these just absolute lies and deceit. Here's where it gets interesting. Thanks for writing that Carlos dude. I'll probably just end up filing a dispute against his claim. Even though there is copyrighted material on that video, I did not get it from the videos Carlos said I did. So I know it's a false claim. As much as I would like to have Carlos face repercussions for making a false claim on my video, I would rather work things out peacefully, which doesn't seem like he wants to. What he doesn't know is that I'm a bit of a computer nerd. So once I dispute the claim, I'll be able to get a lot of his personal information, even his internet IP address, allowing me to know where he lives etc i'm not going to do anything crazy it will just be nice to know who exactly is messing with me because i'm quite confident that carlos plaus isn't a real name lol you know for one he doesn't exist anywhere else on the internet nor does his name even seem real seems like someone was looking around the room for a last name saw a blouse and was like plaus <laughs> so 619 i make this claim which if they are carlos plaus which they are should freak the hell out of them so you can't see it now, but I took a screenshot of the time. So here's that screenshot. This was taken back when this actually happened on 619. And here you can see he saw this message at 9.59 p.m. About 17 minutes later, I get an email that says, it says, good news, Carlos Plaus has just released their copyright claim off your YouTube video. What a kawinky dink. You see here it's 6, 10, 16, 9, exactly 17 minutes later. Everything is settled. Would you look at that? So that was enough for me. Um, it was just, I just used common sense to prove that it was him. Orland does not say anything to me after that. So here's where it gets interesting. So uh, let me go actually go back to Nick. Nick, the next day, says, thanks for the tips. I think that was sort of his bait. And then I didn't want to write back to him. I was pissed off at him. So, okay, so here, it's pretty funny. I guess this is Orlin debating me. Did you make a video about us yet? Nick messaged me saying that you were going to, but I couldn't find it. So I was like, dude, no. And I'm probably never going to do it after that whole Carlos Plaus thing. What does that mean? It means that I'm not an idiot, Orlin. Um, so he plays dumb. I say, I'm willing to put it all behind me. People make mistakes. You kids are young, so I'm not going to blow up the situation. I'm going to keep it private. 
Um, I, I wish people realized that I could have just absolutely ruined these kids' reputation a very long time ago and decided not to because I didn't want the drama and I knew it wouldn't serve anybody. Yeah, I'm just saying, dude, just ask Nick. If you really don't know, just ask him. Um, <clears throat> I said, if he's nice to me for a good while, I'm happy to make a shout out video in the future. Forgiving him pretty much immediately for trying to take my YouTube account down, giving him another chance. Let's stop there and go back to Nick for a moment. All right, so this um, in between these two messages was Woodstock. Nicholas came up to me after, on the first day of Woodstock and said, hey, can we talk? We went somewhere private. He told me that he that it was him who did the account and he's very sorry. I accepted his apology. We opened up together and talked, tried to, to put it behind us. I didn't trust him. And obviously for good reason, as you guys can see, he, he was not trustworthy. He apologized, but um, made the same mistake again, even worse. So, um... He says, I truly hope everything was received as being sincere. I honestly thought he only did it because he uh, felt guilty and he didn't want me to talk behind his back. I have a feeling that if he wouldn't have gone to Woodstock, he never would have told me. Um, I don't know. I, I, I believe in second chances, so I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. But history would show that he doesn't necessarily deserve the benefit of the doubt. By the way, this is pineapple juice, not pee. I did honestly enjoy talking to Nick. Me and Anna spent a fair amount of time with him. He ripped his pants and we offered for him to use a sewing kit. All right, so it's the next day. I wanna point out that it, the only reason it's taken me so much time to make this video is because not only is it hard to address a 40 minute long video of lies, so that takes a long time, but I've been doing my best to not let this consume me, so I've just been working on it here and there in little bits and pieces when I have some free time. But anyways, at this point in the video, I think it's important to mention that my wife, Anna, um, thanked Nicholas multiple times. She even wrote a status uh, mentioning how beautiful it was to have Nicholas's amazing talent play at the wedding. She wrote this before I even wrote my status where I forgot to mention him, and even though I did edit it back in, well, like a day later or something. Here you can read Anna's beautiful status written about Nick. Um, yeah, we could have spent more time with Nick, but to say that we did not thank him is just a complete lie. Yet another lie. I mean, Anna offered to sew his pants after he ripped them with a sewing kit that she went out of her way to go get for him. You know, like, he doesn't mention any of this. Of course he doesn't. Here, I think it's important to point out that Nick accuses my wife of being fake because she posted a comment on somebody's video that said, Nick is a delusional backstabbing drama bitch. Nick says that she's fake because she said that and other times she's been nice to him. That's not her being fake, that's her being pissed off. <laughs> you know, just because sometimes people are nice over here and then uh, in here somebody screws with them and then they're pissed off over here doesn't make either one of those fake, you know? That's, that's life. You, people get upset. People have emotions. And you know what? She deleted that comment about five minutes after she wrote it because she knew that uh, writings out of uh, emotions like that are not, it's not helpful. And the reason she was so angry, this was actually before Nick made the video directed at Anna and I, was because Nick just made a video that basically was trying to taint our wedding experience, trying to turn it into some awful thing at some awful event. And on top of it, um, she tries to reach out to Nicholas, writes a nice message to him um, saying, I understand your frustrations. And what does she get? She, he blocks her. And then she posted that comment on a video of our friend who was actually encouraging Nick's behavior because he didn't know any better. He didn't know how Nick was lying. He was just like impressed at his his charisma. He, Nick has this politician-like charisma that is absolutely amazing. That He can just tell a story and people will believe it because he has a couple screenshots and everything else he fills in with lies. So I think this is one of the most telling things where he is talking to my wife a few months ago saying, um, yeah, Woodstock, sure, it has its problems, but it's there's no other festival like it and it keeps getting better and better every year. Um, at least I think so. So what is he trying to say here? That he didn't get herpes the second year and so it's getting better? No, first of all, he didn't get herpes. And what he's trying to say is, I love Woodstock. Um, that's what his nine videos about Woodstock are trying to say, if, as you can see if you watch them. Um, nothing has changed between then and now. 
Don't take my word for it. Take his word for it. Go watch his nine videos. Tell me what he thinks about Woodstock. Um, oddly enough, there's no mention of herpes. There's no mention of not being appreciated enough for his work that I should add is volunteer work. Um, first of all, we did thank him many times, different occasions, different mediums, publicly, privately, in person. Second of all, it was volunteer work. By definition, volunteers do not get paid for their work. Was he asked to volunteer? Yes, he was asked, but he did. He volunteered. That doesn't make it any less of a volunteering action. Should Anna and I have spent more time with Nicholas after he played at the wedding? Should we have maybe given him a gift or just shared some fruit with him like he mentioned? Yeah, we probably should have. It would have been appropriate for us to do that. Um, we have our lame excuses, like one, we were getting married, we had a lot of issues we were going through. If you know Anna and I, we we sit alone on the grass most of the time. A few friends that we know very well come up to us sometimes, but usually we're alone. We don't hang out in the groups, the big groups of people. Is that a lame excuse? Yeah, it is. It's a lame excuse. There's no good excuse for not showing more appreciation for somebody who played for free at, a, at our wedding, you know? And I do, I do feel bad about that. We've apologized multiple times. I can't tell you how many times um, on Woodstock's official uh, video. We apologize yet again, which I will add he did not respond to. He even tried to get his followers to not watch that video by calling a video official Woodstock response. And all it was was <laughs> Victoria saying some more rude things or... Not even, she was calming down and she was just pointing out his lies and you know, I wonder if that's what he's gonna do with this video. Is he gonna somehow find a way to spin this stuff? I That's why I, I really encourage people to watch my video where it shows all of our conversations because you can see I'm not cherry picking things here. I am showing things that are very telling, but I'm not saying, so I wrote this and this is how Nick responded and just leaving out all of this other stuff. You know, I'm not using these these tactics that Nick has. I'm just addressing certain things that Nick has has addressed or lied about. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know where to go on with this. I we are sorry for the things we did, but dude, <laughs> like I don't think that's what this is all about, you know? This is about this pattern that you have. This is about getting offended, having expectations, having them not met and then attacking and attacking and attacking ruthlessly with lies that is that is what this is all about and that is the biggest issue that needs to be addressed so i'm gonna repeat that as many times as i have to in, until it is understood completely back to the interesting part after a lot of just some friendly talk i still don't trust him and i still have negative feelings for him you could say i still have a grudge against him here he asks me to share one of his youtube videos I ignore him because I don't want to share this video because I think Bernie Sanders is probably just a corporate shill. So I know he's way better than Hillary and Trump and all the rest, but I still think he's a corporate shill. I think he's a puppet for the banksters. You just have to look at his record to prove that. But first of all, the video has clickbait, which I don't like. Second of all, the video is basically telling Bernie Sanders to talk about how animal agriculture is the leading cause of climate change. I just thought that was a waste of time because I think he's a corporate shill and I don't think he's going to uh, address something his puppet masters don't want him to address. Plus, it's just not going to be good for his campaign if he's doing that at the moment. But he had good intentions, even if he had clickbait, I guess. I'm glad he is going, getting back to making these videos, but it's quite obvious that he's only getting back to these videos because he's caught, he's trapped, and he can't go on anymore about Woodstock Fruit Festival. He's been debunked. Nick, I encourage you to not only make these videos, but apologize for what you've done, and then start going back to the good things that you can do, instead of just running away from your lies and deceit. Anyways, so I ignored him here. Actually, I don't have a screenshot of this because it was on one of my posts, but Orlin wrote, hey dude, why are you ignoring Nick? And I got pretty upset at that because Orlin never apologized to me about anything. And all of a sudden he's saying, hey, why won't you share our videos? Um, that was another reason why I didn't reply to either of them. And then Nick tagged me in one of his videos. And I said, dude, will you please stop tagging me in things unless you, I'm in them or something? No problem at all. Why didn't you respond to me when I needed you the most last month? Both Orlin and I tried to reach out to you and you completely ignored us. So I basically just told him what I thought about his video here. I think Bernie's another Obama says one thing will do another. I thought it would be easier to ignore you than tell you that. 
it was dumb. I'm sorry. I watched the video. I think you do good work. Well, I think it's a waste of a waste of time to um, convince a puppet to tell talk about something his puppet masters don't want him talking about. I do feel bad for not spreading an impactful vegan message when given the chance. I'm not trying to be a dick. You asked me why. I'm just being honest. Maybe now you see why I would have rather just ignored the ask for help. I mean, Orlin hasn't even apologized, and the next time he says anything to me is asking to share your video. I mean, for fuck's sake. So I was pretty upset with this. Um, this is just amazing to me. He basically tries to guilt trip me. He said, I thought you were truly in it for the animals. So apparently because I didn't share his video, I'm not in it for the animals. And this is where I really lay into him and tell him the way I feel. I said, I don't trust you, man. I forgave you, but I do not trust you. So I get pretty blunt here and say, I see right through you, bud. I appreciate what you did. You didn't have to, but you betrayed me and I, I don't trust you. So I was pretty pissed off here, not having much compassion, but you just showed me that you have a grudge against me, didn't accept my apology, ignored me, don't appreciate my, my help. So here I say, the bottom line is that you have done nothing to make me trust you again. If you think about it for a moment, you'll see that it's true. You have only apologized to me because I found out it was you. You were hoping you would have gotten away with it. If you really did feel bad, you would have taken the strike off my account before you were caught. But no, you kept it on until your ass was on the line. If we copy and paste this mindset onto your later actions, it becomes clear that you apologized out of fear of being exposed and didn't give me the footage because you want us to be friends, but because you didn't want have much of a choice. Voice. This favor didn't end up being much of a favor since you asked for footage as well. Can't imagine you would have done that if I hadn't asked first. Basically, I just was not forgiving him, or I just wasn't trusting him at least. I'm not really happy about our relationship and really just sort of laying into him. Your lack of effort to make up for things has left me no desire to support you or your work. It's not that I don't want to be friends, just that I think you haven't changed, so it's really, it's not really a possibility. Um, I think his recent actions against me and the Woodstock Fruit Festival shows that he still has not changed. Nick, I hope you recognize all these things. Recognize this pattern of getting upset and trying to attack an organization or a person. Uh, it, it's not a healthy way of dealing with your frustrations. It's illegal, damaging, and harmful and hurtful. I say I get it. I'm selfish at times too, but it's important that we work on the relationships you want, especially if they're on thin ice like ours is. I just didn't see you working on it, so I took it as a sign. I don't think you can blame me for it either. Dude, eat some carbs. It's scary now. I said, wow, did you even write anything I just wrote you? Yes, I don't want to argue anymore. Plus, it's okay. And then another essay of you saying a bunch of stuff. I just can't anymore. Contradictions, my goodness. Did you eat today? genuinely asking this because I know you've been depressed and fasting a lot lately and that messes with the brain. Um, I hadn't fasted in many months at this point, but anyways, um, I wasn't arguing after that point. I encourage you to reread it. I don't think it warrants the response you have given. I assure you I am thoroughly carbed. <laughs> Autocorrect was not helping me in that moment. But I think we should honestly break down what's happening here a little bit. Um, I'm expressing my feelings to him, um, and he tells me to go eat, you know, carb the fuck up. Don't talk, don't express yourself, just go eat. Hey man, I forgive you, I know I've said it a million times, but I'm finally ready to actually move on. I think I pretended like I forgave you before because I wanted to be a bigger man, you know. So ready to give up on the egotism, it sucks so much. Only love and acceptance from here on out, for me, for you, for everyone, for the animals on the planet. Also, a few days ago, I made a video that ended with saying, I don't have hypoglycemia. It was obviously directed at you, and I feel really bad about it now. Who the fuck am I to be poking fun at somebody who potentially has health issues? It's incredible what the ego is capable of. I'm sorry, Nicholas. I hope you are well, and I hope we can both get over this mountain of bullshit we have created between us for the greater good and just because life is too damn short for this shit. At this point, he blocks me. Very soon after, I created a video that's called Making Amends with Those I've Hurt, where I apologize to Doug Graham for the videos I made of him, and I apologize to Nicholas and forgive Nicholas for what he's done to me. Um, I got no reply for that. I wanna point out this part with the hypoglycemia. He made the claim that he got hypoglycemia and that's why the fruit-based diet wasn't working for him. 
I want to make it clear that he was eating basically nothing but avocados and bananas at this point. He talks about it in his videos, and there's no long-term raw foodist that recommends a diet, anything like that. So I think it's very important that people take his hypoglycemia claim with a grain of salt. He also, in somewhere in this conversation, says... Uh, Avocados saved me from cheese. I think this is quite telling because he claims that he was on overt fat-free diet. That's how he lost all of his weight. In the beginning, he was following Freely Banana Girl's recommendations, no overt fats whatsoever. So this basically says that avocados saved him from his cheese addiction. His new claims are saying that avocados helped him from feeling some negative effects of the raw food diet that had to do with blood sugar issues. I, I would argue the opposite, that the avocados are causing the blood sugar issues, as fat does that, um, especially in excess. So I would also like to point out that he has a video where he talks about how he eats avocados because he doesn't like the intensity of the detox symptoms of the raw food diet. So he eats a little bit of avocado when he's having some emotional issues. I think all of these stories are, are obviously, not all of them are false. I think one is obviously being very open. So what I'm trying to explain there, albeit quite poorly, is that Nicholas has many stories about why he eats so many avocados. I believe the one he told me about the cheese addiction is probably pretty along the lines of truth. And also the one where he's making a video saying, yeah, maybe so what? Maybe I do eat a lot of avocados to slow down detox. So what? It's, you know, that's transparency. And I remember when I first watched that, I was like, yes, transparency. Awesome. Good job, man. And I just watched it again. I was like, dude, where's this Nicholas? Why can't we have him back? You know, and transparency is awesome. It's really important. But now, no, now he's saying raw foodism gave me hypoglycemia. And so I started eating more avocados because fat is healthier. So here's this pattern. Let's look at it one more time. I love what raw foods, they help me lose weight. And then now I'm able to work out and I've gained a lot of muscle on them. And then all of a sudden he starts eating cooked food and somebody says something insensitive to him. And now, fuck raw foods. Let's debunk raw foods. Raw foods made me skinny, totally dismissing the fact that he actually gained most of the strength and muscle that he did on a raw food diet. You know, and now he's saying, oh, no, now it made me skinny. And he's taking all these little pictures from when he was super skinny, he didn't exercise and saying that's what the raw food diet does to you. You know, let's look at this one more time. So Woodstock, he loves Woodstock. He makes nine videos about how much he loves Woodstock. An hour and 35 minutes of pure Woodstock praise. So what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. Victoria makes a comment that's rude to him. Now fuck Woodstock. I got herpes at Woodstock. Uh, don't, don't focus on the fact that I wanted to get married or I came back Woods to Woodstock multiple times. Don't focus on that. Focus on herpes. I got herpes at Woodstock. You know, there's no proof he even has herpes. That was the clickbait for the video, but he didn't even mention it until like 15 minutes into the video, you know? And then he was just like, oh, Orlin has herpes and now I have herpes and we got it from Woodstock coconut cakes. Yeah, really? Did the herpes go down a straw into a coconut? scooped out, blended up into a, this cake that Orland didn't even eat. Let's, Orland didn't even eat this cake. You know, how far, how ridiculous do we have to go? There's just so, like, is anybody seeing this pattern of what's going on here? How about one more time? Let's do it one more time. So Rainey gets pissed off that he's trying to defame Woodstock. And so he says, he makes it quite clear that Nick, I'm exposing you. I'm, I'm going to tell people how you are and what you're doing. And all of a sudden, boom, fuck Rainy. He's a anti-breastfeeding, fake-ass, dogmatic, rude, crazy person, you know? Anybody, please, anybody, does anybody see this pattern? Type below, yes, I see this pattern, <laughs> you know? He's not dealing with the situations at hand. He's just attacking people. And Nick, I want you to look at this pattern, ask yourself why you're doing it, where this pattern came from, and how you can in the future change this pattern because it's not serving you and it's definitely not serving anybody else. I would like to now read an email from Lisa. I think Lisa basically realized the same thing that I realized, that Nick didn't really care about me. Nick just wanted YouTube support, YouTube views. 
So in Lisa's case, it wasn't necessarily about YouTube views, but if you translate YouTube views into money, then you'll see it's basically the same thing because in Lisa's case, it was about money. They wanted her money. Lisa realized the same thing and just kind of stopped talking to Nicholas and that really pissed off Nicholas and Orlin. I'd like to point out that Orlin didn't take Lisa's money from the beginning because he said that he knows strings are attached when anybody's giving you money. But after he met Lisa, and he claims that Lisa was verbally, was very rude to him, was bipolar, all these bad things. Then later, he had no problem taking money from Lisa. They're writing their, her all these beautiful, nice messages over the top saying, oh, we'd love to travel with you. Oh, will you buy us this house? Oh, will you buy us this camera? I mean, if you thought she was such an awful person, why would you want to go traveling with her? If you thought she was such an awful person and there's strings attached to her money, why would you ask for her money later, you know? So there's just more of these patterns happening. And once, once she stopped talking to them, they made a, a video throwing her under the bus after all she has done for them. She's paid $2,500 about for Nicholas's two weeks at Woodstock Fruit Festival and who knows what else. And you you claim that um, you say that she, she started eating cheese, but here it basically proves that you started eating cheese um, in the middle of your transition from a overt fat-free diet to a diet of avocados and there's nothing wrong with that if that happened then you own it you're transparent about it and you move on i ate, i ate some cheese in buenos aires about five years ago i was very depressed i was all alone in buenos aires and i bought a block of cheese and i ate it and it was, I never had a worse headache in my entire life. Like if I were to turn my head like that, it would feel like my brain was like smashing up against the brick wall. And then the next day I woke up, my clothes smelled like cheese. The whole hostel room smelled like cheese. The bed sheet smelled like cheese. It was insane. It just went out of my pores. And I'll talk about that. I made a huge mistake. I ate some cheese. I recommend you tell your real story, Nicholas, so you're not encouraging people to stay away from a raw food diet the same diet that helped you out. I recommend that you follow your body. And if you're, you're making videos one day that says you're eating avocados to slow detox, then you own that and you don't try to tell people that you're eating avocados because a low fat diet is dangerous. You have a, a big following and people are listening to you for advice, you know, and you're, you're responsible for that. I'm not perfect. I'm not a saint. I'm willing to admit all my faults. I'm sorry for not spending more time with you in 2014. I thought the time we spent in 2015 was nice and definitely worth mentioning, but you failed to mention all the, all the things we did say to you, all the thank yous we did give you, and all the apologies we did give you. I hope this, this is eye-opening for people to see what's going on here. And um, Nicholas, if you just come clean, and apologize to your followers and to me and to everybody within the community. You will be greeted with open arms. You will be seen as somebody with integrity because right now I can promise you a lot of people are not seeing you that way. And this is an opportunity for growth. It's a huge opportunity for growth and I hope you take it, man. I really do. I really hope that one day we can laugh at all this or at least forget it. It'll be in the past and maybe we can make some music. You can play violin, I'll play guitar. You know, I'm willing to forgive you and willing to move on. Yeah, I didn't even read Lisa's statement. I apologize. Here we go. Hi, Nicholas and Orlin. Thank you for taking so much time to include me in your video, although it saddened me that you couldn't find one kind word to say on my behalf. It was always such a pleasure to have you both visit me in my cabin at Woodstock Fruit Festival and many others too. The door was always open. I was perplexed you called me creepy and yet visited me every day. By the way, guys, I'm not 60, but I look forward to the day I am. I have never used the word retarded, and to say I spoke of my friend Carla that way is so unkind to her and me. I have since telephoned Carla and her son Jason in Thailand to apologize to them on your behalf. My heart remains forever open. I thank Jesus every day for being so blessed in my life, which allows me the honor of giving and paying forward. Please don't feel I had a hidden agenda in offering to sponsor you both at the festival. For your information, last year I was contacted by a lady in England. She asked if I could help a very ill young lady get to Woodstock Fruit Festival 15. I had already paid for a private room. I immediately contacted Anne to make the arrangements and for a friend to accompany her. No questions asked. I hold no bitterness whatsoever towards you both for your unprovoked betrayal, and I forgive you. With love... Lisa Jane. 
So you see, even after you've thrown us under the bus, we are still willing to open our, our hearts and our minds and our, our arms to you, Nicholas and Orlin. I, I think what I'm asking for is a public apology and acknowledgement of everything you've done. I hope people see my side of the story. Thank you very much for watching. Again, Nicholas, you are forgiven. Just please do the right thing for yourself, for all of us, for me, for, for the community, for veganism, for the animals, the planet. My throat is starting to hurt quite bad. I don't think I've talked this much in since I was 14 years old. So thanks again for watching. Much love, everybody. Hey, everybody. So um, I recorded that bit where I'm saying my throat started to hurt. I recorded that weeks ago, um, but I just didn't get it uploaded because honestly, I thought I was way too soft. I, I think it was it was um, all truthful and it was the way I feel like it's, it's the best way to solve the situation is being soft and not... Um, backing Nick into another corner so he's gonna attack more. I honestly like I've had these interjections where I where I come in and I'm like a bit more harsh and that's how I feel. If, if Nick wants to claim that I'm fake because of that, go ahead Nick. This is me. This is me being real. This is humanity. Sometimes we get angry. Sometimes we feel different feelings and that's okay. So this is two sides of me. If you want to call me crazy or bipolar, Go right ahead. I think I'm just a human being. Um, I get upset when I, people make 40 minute long videos about me very maliciously manipulating people into thinking that I'm some crazy person. So <sighs> can't blame me. I really don't think you can blame me. But anyways, yeah, back to back to the solution. I really do hope that you take this situation as a opportunity for growth. If you embrace the fact that acknowledging this pattern of yours is going to allow you to break it and I don't think you enjoy this any more than anybody else. I think it gets you views and that's the only point that you find some enjoyment out of it. But in the end, I think you and I have talked in private messages as as people will see if they watch the full version of our conversations that you have acknowledged this pattern before and you don't enjoy it. And so if you just acknowledge this pattern publicly and make an, a public apology for all of this, I promise you people are, are not going to be, some people might be like, whoa, dude, that was crazy. But like, thanks for coming clean. That must have been really tough. I think this is probably some pattern that started a long time ago before you and I met, you know. So I think it's really going to be helpful for you and for the community, for for everybody to to go through this. I think this could be a really amazing story in the end, honestly. Yeah. And what if, what if one day you and I make music together, dude, you know? Like, what if? I think that would be an amazing thing. So, please, um, please consider coming clean, being honest, um, stopping this pattern, and just using this opportunity as a opportunity for growth. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching this. Um, again, if you want to watch the full conversation, our private messages, I think that will give you quite a bit more insight. There are some things that Nick told me um, in person that I think would give even more insight, but since I can't prove any of them, I'm just gonna leave those out. I think everything here is really quite telling. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to to go through this. Um, I'm just, I, I know it wasn't necessarily fun, and it was a, probably a big waste of all of our times, but I think it's necessary because we can't have this kind of stuff hanging over the head of Woodstock and me and Nick and Anna and Lisa and all these people that just don't deserve it. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching this. Please share this if you want others to know the truth um, or don't. It doesn't matter to me. I think it'll get out there. Nick, you delete your videos. I'll delete this one happily. Any day, man. Um, yeah, let's squash this. Let's get this thing over with. Peace.